welcome to this video here. I'm going to go through an exam paper based on waves, including some first harmonic kind of questions here. So as you can see here, I've got a question. The diagram below shows one position of a guitar string that's been stretched between point X and Y. The string vibrates at a frequency of 330 hertz. State the phase relationship between points A and B on the string. Now, this is actually really important that you're aware of what terms mean. So this idea of phase relationship means the angle in degrees or radians positions are from each other. Okay. And this is important that you realize this because I do, do see students write half a wavelength apart. And yes, they are half a wavelength apart, but that is not the phase relationship. OK, so the phase relationship is if you were going to transfer this into degrees, how many degrees is it apart from each other? And half a wavelength is pi radians. Or 180 degrees, OK, so this here, pi radians or 180, so you'll get one mark for saying either of these. You could say both and you'll get away with it as well, but you could say either. But it's really important that you understand that phase relationship is all to do with angles, not the wavelength. So. Part B, point X and Y are 0.66 meters apart. So the point between this part where it's attached and this part attached is 0.6 meters. Calculate the wave speed along the wave. So you know that over 0.66 meters, I've got one and a half waves. Okay, so one and a half waves is 0.66 meters. So one wavelength is going to be this divided by 1.5, and that's going to be 0.44 meters. The speed of a wave is the frequency times its wavelength. And I know the frequency of this is 330 hertz, because it was told to me at the beginning. So I know I've got 330 times by 0.44 here, and that's going to be 145.2 meters per second. It's really important that you can write the answer here, but you must write it down in the little box down here. OK, so there was one mark available for actually working out what the true wavelength was and one mark for the answer of 145.2. OK, next question. So this is actually quite a cheeky little question, but I'll show you how to answer this one. So the total mass of a string is 3.1 grams and the length of the string is 0.91 meters. Show that the tension in the string when sounding the harmonic shown in the diagram is about 70 newtons. So you've got tension, you've got mass, etc. And they're asking about harmonics. There's one formula in data sheet, which is F equals one over two L root tension over mu. And this mu, is mass per unit length. It's kind of like a one dimensional density there. So the mass of the object is going to be 3.1 divided by 1000 because it has to be in kilograms divided by the, the total length of the string that they're telling you. So that's 3.1 divided by 1000 divided by 0.91. And that's going to be an answer of 3.4 times 10 to the minus 3 kilograms per meter. Now, when you're doing the first harmonic formula, this is the frequency for the first harmonic. And currently, what you have up here, if I scroll up, this here is the third harmonic. So you've got one, two, three. So one, two, three, it's the third harmonic. And it has a frequency of 330 hertz. For the first harmonic, that's going to be the third harmonic is got a frequency of 330 hertz. The first harmonic is going to be 110 hertz. And that's because if you look at this, what will happen is so this is one and a half wavelengths. And this is the, the speed here. So the speed of this wave is going to remain constant. If I go to the second harmonic, this 0.66 meters will be one wavelength. So the the wavelength would be 0.66 meters. And to keep the set speed the same, the frequency must go down. When I'm at the first harmonic, it's half a wavelength, which means the wavelength is going to be 1.32 meters. So again, the frequency will have to drop. So let's actually rearrange this formula. So I end up with 
2L times by the frequency. So I've put this section up equals the square root of T over mu. So I've got 2L F squared times by my mu, and that should be my tension. So I'm all going to put this into the calculator now. So my answer. Um, so put, now, just remembered something here that I've got to make you aware of. This length is the length of the string affected. So this is the string affected. Now, this is where it got really cheeky. And I have I, I made a mistake the first time I did this paper. OK, is that here L is a string that's going under the harmonic. So the length of the string that's going under the harmonic is between X and Y. Mu is over the total string. Now, if you can imagine a, gar a guitar string, a guitar string um, will be stretched and it will be you have some of it wound up. When you're looking at the first harmonic, this L, OK, is the, the length of the string on the harmonic of the harmonic string. And this is the information. So I called it kind of like a density. It's a constant over the whole of this string. OK, so the fact that I'm using 0.66 of it means that the mass of the string I'm focused on is going to be three point um, is going to be a third, about a third of that. So point, um, 0.66 to 0.91. So that is about 72 percent. So. I know the mass of this 0.66 is going to be 2.24 grams, but this ratio of mass over length will be the same. And it's quite a cheeky little thing here. So in this case, I'm going to have 2 times 0.66 times 110 squared times by my mu. And I put that into my calculator. So 2 times 0.66 times by 110 squared times by... 3.4 times 10 to the minus 3, and I get an answer of 71.68. So it's actually really, really, really mean when they're using different letters for L and what they mean here. So it's really important that you understand, so in this case it would be 0 0.66 metres, that when you're doing mu, this is like a density. So it's a constant over the string. So it doesn't matter how long the string that I have, um, the ratio between the mass of that part of that string and its length will be consistent at 3.4 times 10 to the minus 3. So you know that information from the top to the total mass of the string and the total length. So you can work out mu from that answer. When you're doing the ha fundamental harmonic question, L is the length of the harmonic that the string is dealing with. And in this case, it is 0 0.66. It's a very mean question, I will not lie. Um, but the kind of marks that you can get for it. So you got one mark for working out what the fundamental frequency was, one mark for doing the formula and the third mark for getting the right answer. So you can actually pick up a few of those marks, predominantly the first one if you get the right harmonic, and potentially the second one if you um, use the formula correctly. You wouldn't, of course, got the third one. The thing is, you may have got frustrated that you wouldn't have got the right answer. You wouldn't have got 71.68 over and over and over again, which will really frustrate you. And it did for me a few times. Um, if you get to a point where you're going, I'm not getting the right answer, maybe cut, leave it, come back to it, but leave your working there because your working is valid um, and can help you get marks. Do not start scribbling out unless you are con convinced that that's completely wrong and you're not going back to it. If you're going to come back to it, just leave it there just in case you forget. So the string is fixed at one end and wrapped around a turning peg that has a radius of 0.3 millimetres at the other. The turning peg needs to be turned through three, com three complete rotations to increase the tension. Discuss by estimating the energy stored in the string where there is a significant risk to the, when the guitar player breaks. So when you're turning that peg, you're, in, you're basically turning the, your, the string is fixed to one end and wrapped around a turning peg of three minutes. Three minutes. It's going to be turned by three complete rotations. So if you look at this, you're going to extend your string. Oh, God, can't spell today. Extend your string by three rotations. So that's going to be 3 times 2 pi r. So that's because that's the circumference, what you're doing. You're going around on the circumference. 
So 3 times 2 times pi times by 3 times 10 to the minus 3. So you're going to be extending it by 0 0.0565. Okay. So you're extending the string by that many rotations. Strain energy is a half Fx. So it's going to be a half times by 70 or 72 times by 0.05, so times that by 72, divide it by 2, and I've approximately got about 2 joules worth of energy being stored in that object there. So I've got about 2 joules of energy here, and if you think about it, 2 joules, if you want to start comparing, this is where it gets quite interesting, this idea of discuss by estimating the energy. So you need to understand what 2 joules of energy is. So if you think about it, if I had a meter here and I was raising an object a meter high, so it's GPE is MGH. So if I've got a one meter thing and I took a, um, let's go back a little bit. I'm like, yeah, no, one meter. Um, so two joules would be mass times 9.81 times by uh ba, 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 one so two divided by 9.81 so 0 0.2 so a 200 gram object so it'd be raising a 200 gram object about a meter high and then if you think about how fast that would come down so a half m v squared so this object here again it's going to be two joules so 0 0.2 so times by um, 2 divided by that times by 2 and then square root that answer the velocity of this object is going to be at 4.4 meters per second okay so this one here you've got something moving at 4.4 meters per second now that's quite fast um, in if you think about it so for per second it's moving four meters most people run around about three. So it's, it's got quite a bit of energy. It's a very thin, whippy wire. Now, this is what the mark scheme's for. So, so it's a three-mark question. And you've got one mark for actually, you actually got two marks for actually working out the energy in the string. The third and final mark, okay, was for actually talking about um comparing it to something okay so normally when it's about energy i normally compare to mgh or a half mv squared so that's something you could have done you could have converted what's two joules let's say it's a kilogram object and you could have worked out the velocity it would be moving of course this object is very tiny it's 3.1 grams so if you actually look at this one so in this case a half mv squared so it's 3.1 grams so a half times by 3.1 times 10 to the minus 3 times by v squared is 2. So you can actually work out the speed this wire would go. So 2 times 2 divided by 3.1 times 10 to the minus 3 and square root that, I have something moving at th the velocity of this string be 35.9 meters per second. Okay, so you could have mentioned the string if snapped moves at 35.9 meters per second which is fast enough to cause damage okay so that this last part here was for the actual discussion part so this little section here that says discussion when you see the word estimating the energy that means to do some calculations and that's exactly what I did there. And there are two marks there. And then discuss whether there is a significant risk um, to the actual person. So then I worked out how fast it was going and went, yeah, that's going to be moving pretty fast and it's going to cause some damage if you get hit. OK, so there we go. So that's my calculation. So this is just an example of my calculation and I'm still writing a highlighter. So this is an example of using MGH, but this is using the mass of the string here. So if you're ever asked how dangerous something is in regards to snapping or anything, work out its kinetic energy. Uh, 35 meters per second, by the way, in miles per hour, so 
35 meters per second in MPH is approximately about 78 miles per hour. So yes, that's going to hurt. All right. So hopefully that will help you with a waves question um, in the future and take care.